Welcome to AL Build, my tool for building Business Central apps. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, you might have seen in some of the other videos that I sometimes use a tool to to build an app. You know, more than when you just you know compile in Visual Studio Code. Um, lots of flashing going on and. Uh, I usually run something on a command line and I may have hinted from time to time that, hey, I have this tool that I'm using to build. Um, there are lots of tools out there uh, for doing a CDCI kind of development. Uh, it's tools that will compile and do whatever steps is, is needed, testing, deploying, uh, um, all that good stuff. And um, I started this tool when, you know, when AL first came out and it, it, it was, you know, for for one customer, myself, to help myself uh, remember the steps I need to do and, and all, the, all those things. And the tool have kind of evolved over time. And, and recently I, I set aside a bit of a uh, bit of time to no, clean it up, and um, I think it's in a state now that I'm, I'm willing to show you guys what I'm doing, and this might inspire you to how you want to handle your pipelines or build processes on CDCI, whatever you, you call it. Um, and instead of all this talk, let me actually uh, show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so here is the command line, because this is a command line tool. Surprise, surprise, Eric made a command line tool. Um, so I'm gonna call build here. And um, it's gonna probably gonna flash by fairly quickly, but we can scroll back and take a look at it. So it calls a tool, something happens, some lots of stuff happens. You can see now we're in like some sort of compiling piece. Um, that's a bit slow, and then we have a some translation and we're back to compiling um, and then we're signing and now we're deploying to a docker and now we're running uh, what are we doing oh it was so fast <laughs> okay let, let, let me just let this run true then then I'll try to explain what what's happening so this is this is the the process for another app the my my Eric's toolbox app uh, You'll see more about that that's, uh, very soon, which is an app built upon the AL compiler and stuff I made. Anyway, it's done. So that took, well, we're only a couple of minutes into the video, so it only took a few seconds. Um, but let's scroll back and, and do the, take a look at this in, 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 in slow motion. So I call the build command. So build is actually just a, a batch file that calls AL build and passes a, a JSON file uh, with instructions. And um, we can see that the very first thing this one is doing here is deploying a test runner app uh, to my uh, my Docker container. Uh, it actually says that it's on on unprocessable entity because that app is already there in the exact same version. So uh, AL build knows that if that specific error comes around, it's okay. It's just because it's already there. So that's completely successful. Then it calls out to git and pulls, do a, a, a git pull in in the root folder. So in this, this app happens to actually be two apps in, in one. Uh, so there's a compiler app and then there's a user interface app. Um, so it it does git pull and that's that's fine that's done so now it calls it has a function called update version meaning that it goes in and and you 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 give it an app.json uh, file location and say hey update the app and update the fourth component so we update from one 0069 to 10070. Um, then the next step that happens is that 
we ask ALBuild to remember in, in this. Um, and what does remember means? Remember means that that now it knows that this is the app that we're working on. Um, so I'll, I'll show you the JSON file in a, in a bit, and then this command makes hopefully makes sense. Uh, so now we're into the first compile. So we compile an app, uh, calls the AL compiler, compile, compile, compile. Um, then we call the translate function. So now we want to create translations for this one. And uh, in this case, this is the compiler. So there's almost none UI. There's one dialogue uh, with a couple of, of strings in it. That's it. Um, so we have three texts that we need to um, need to translate. And we can see that they are all just being processed and not does not have to be pulled from the cloud or does not have to be cloud translated anyway. So, so we already knew of those translations. So that flies by. Um, so after we added the translation, we call compile again. So we compile to get the translation input, then we compile with the translation the second time. After that is done, we call out to code sign the app file. So uh, go, we sign it and then we call deploy basic Docker. And what, what does that mean? Well, deploy basic Docker means to de deploy the app using basic authentication to a Docker image. Um, and uh, we can see that it deployed the app. Okay. It deploys in dev uh, space just to make it easier to work with. Um, after that is done, it now calls the next task here is test basic Docker, which means run a test code unit using basic authentication in the Docker environment. So we're calling our test code unit something in a company called Kronos that completed successfully. And, and this thing is actually using the app that we deployed up here to begin with. So we deployed a test runner app, uh, which is what this guy is now using. So after that completed successful, we copy. So in this case, uh, whenever I do a build, I want the artifacts to sit in a specific folder. So we're copying the output version 10070 app to a release folder where that's where I want to keep all my, my artifacts from builds. Um, when that is updated, we call and so I'm seeing, now we are starting to repeat because I, as I told you, this app is actually two apps. So there's a compiler app and a UI app. Uh, so now we're done with the compiler app uh, and onto the UI app. So now we call the update version. So in this case, I keep the versions on the two apps separated. So at this point, the compiler was up to version 70, but the, the toolbox is going from 22 to 23. Now we, so, so this is the exact same process. Uh, so now we're telling AL build to, Hey, now, this is the app that we're working on. So we use the remember command again. We call it compile. We call it translation. And since you can see that this is the this is the UI thing. So there's a bunch of there's 230 translations. Uh, um, text, whatever we call it uh, in this app. Um, and when we are done translating, we call the compiler again. We can see that there's a warning here about sorting on system created that. Um, and when that compilation is done, we sign this app. We deploy the app to our Docker image again. We call the test code unit, so test it. And when that's completely successfully, we copy this app file also into the release folder. Then we 
call a git command to add asterisk. So whatever changes that has been made, like the app.json file and uh, translations and stuff like that, we we add to, to git, uh, we stage that, and then we commit it. Um, so that is done. Um, and then we push uh, uh, all the changes to the private repo in, in, in GitHub. And build completed, we're done. So that was, that was a lot of stuff. It took me way too long to even explain what happened. But so that's how I create the add two app files that go into app source. This is the process. And it's, let me, let me, let me do the, uh, here, I think I got a stopwatch somewhere on my arm. No, I should, I, perhaps I, I call this guy and, and all the stuff happens. It happens, it happens fairly quick. Compile the second time of the first app. We deploy it to Docker. We call the tests. We uh, compile the uh, the second app the first time. We do all the translations for the second app. We compile the second app again. We're done. We're deploying that to Docker. We're calling the test code unit. We're doing all the Git stuff, and we're done. Thirty seven seconds to build the the complete app uh, and then you can say, oh this is a small app and so on but but hey this is this is the app so i promised you to um to show you the actual json so this is the json um and one thing that I have never really had any love for is YAML. Uh, that's a very strange syntax. Uh, so in this here, I I have been free to you know make make my own. Uh, so the thing is a JSON. There's a JSON, and there is a, you know the project name. And in this case, I have asked the uh, AL build to when you complete a build, send me a report of what happened. Uh, on my email, we could also have it file a file somewhere in a, in a folder. Um, and the rest of this file are tasks. And the order of the task in this array is the order they are going to get executed. You can only proceed to the next task if the previous one succeeds. And you can see here that deploy basic Docker uh it, this is the test runner we also have a different we can also do deploy sas uh then we need to supply a, a client id a secret and tenant and stuff like that so everything that's happening here when working toward the cloud sandboxes works on um, service to service authentication so you you set up a the al build as an as a an AAD application, so we're we're not we do not have complicated um, login situation. It's it's very reliable, or, and and it's, it's it's the exact same experience. It's just towards a cloud sandbox instead. Anyway, you can see the deploy command is is very um, very simple. We got an what is the app file that we want to. On deploy in this case is the test runner. What is the base URL? Uh, so in this case, the base URL for deploy on prem is the uh, the dev endpoint. Uh, username, password, and schema update mode. And yeah, by the way, this is this is actually not the file we just ran because this one has I removed all the passwords. Sorry about that. Um, so next step is, is the Git functionality and you see here the structure for a task is there's a type and a settings so so the the type and settings are there for everybody and and depending on what the type is then the settings has different fields in it so in case of git we have a path to where we want to execute the git command and there's a command that we want to call 
Um, it'll be able to figure out where Git is on your machine and all that good stuff. So this is all we need. Then the next one was to update a, uh, the version number. So in this case, we specify the path of where to find the app. We tell what part of the version number that we want to increment. So in this case, our app was called 1.0069 or 70. So we want, in this case, I want the fourth one to be the one that we increment. increment. So that's what you specify here and what is the increment actually. So in this case, I'm just incrementing with one every time. Now, I then the next one was the remember function. So now I tell the system to remember this location. And what does that mean? That means that from this point on in this JSON file, you can see here that now I say compile, but I don't specify the long path where this app is located. I just say percent app pass percent. So every entity in the app JSON, the version, the name, the publisher, the, the anything has now been turned into substitutions here plus the root folder of the app is which is called app path um, and you, you can see here that so after the compiler we call translate and the translate function needs two settings it needs to figure out where is the xlf file that we want to start compiling or translating from so in this case it's now in app path backslash since we're in in json we need to have two backslash translations and then percent name that's actually the name taken out of the app.json so if i for some reason choose to change the name of the app this was still built um and the the translation tool uh, i think i did a video on that one uh, uh needs to know what app if this is a new translation we've never seen before uh then we are telling the translation database where this came from. Um, so compile, the second compile the exact same as the first compile. Then we have the, uh, the sign. Uh, so we tell where is our app. Um, and uh, we, we tell uh, where is our, our, our key file and the password. Um, and it, since we've remembered the location, it knows the file name to uh, uh, to sign. Now we're calling deploy basic Docker again. This time with the app, and you can see here now the app file is getting rather uh, unreadable. So the in in app path percent publisher underscore percent name underscore percent version dot app. That's the app name. And we're deploying that again. The test function is similar, but now the base UL is, is the OData part. Uh, we got to use the password in the company and then whatever test code you need, you want to run. So the this app, the test runner that we're um, we're deploying is is a very very simple app. Actually, let me. Um, let me uh, go to unit hill build. This is a very, very simple app. Um, the app has one code unit, which is a test runner code unit exposed as a, uh, as, as a web service to be actually pretty cool. Uh, so it has a function called run code unit and you specify code unit number, it will run that code unit, which is test code unit. Uh, and then we get the error if any error occurred. Um, and that code unit is exposed as, as a web service. Um, so very, very simple that this is the entire app here. Um, so pretty cool that you can actually expose a test runner as a web service that, um, that makes made some stuff way more easy. So where were we? Oh, we got 
down to so we run the code test code unit in in that app uh, for that if that succeeds then we copy you see the copy function again uses the substitutions and copy to where we want to copy this one and we call git at star asterisk asterisk star asterisk in Danish we call this one a star um, and we do a commit git and we could do a git push and then we're done um, so that's al build um, so the actual program is uh, is created in in c sharp and it, it's it's fairly fairly simple in reality so we read a uh, you know we read a json uh, we run through all the tasks and depending on what the task is we run into uh let, let's take a look at sas deploy i think that that would be a good one so we run into that one uh here we go sas deploy so the first thing it will do is that it does these the site to site i think we did a video on that also um the, get the, the get your authentication then we call into I guess that is actually probably not documented from Microsoft's way. Anyway, um, you can. So re remember, I, I in in right now I was using towards Docker, so I used the uh, the dev endpoint. Uh, the dev endpoint in the cloud is sitting at slash dev slash apps, and the dev endpoint here actually take what is a, a multi-part form data with the uh, with the app in it <laughs> so so if you if you just get that right you, you just post the app to that endpoint and it gets deployed uh, so here is the the deploy task in in you know that's uh, less than sixty lines of, of C sharp. Um, so so pretty surprisingly simple in reality, uh, and that's kind of how it goes for most of these tasks. That it's what happens behind the scene is is very simple, and and uh, I think that this is Git again. Oh, there. So there's a bit of plumbing to, to figure out where git.exe is actually on your machine. But other than that, it's very simple uh, again. Um, what we didn't see here in, in this one that we can also call PowerShell if, if I wanted to call the BC container helper to create a uh, created uh, a, a container or, or stuff like that i can call all the powershell stuff from in here um what else i think that's i think we have seen most of this any other than that um oops i'm gonna make sure i don't break anything so that is al build and and that's that's how i build the apps i think for me I, you know i'm just a one machine kind of guy it's it's very i don't i don't need build servers running somewhere in the cloud and i, and I don't have the patience to uh, task getting you know then you getting scheduled on another machine and then 10 minutes later it, it's done uh, I don't have the patience for this, uh, and and I got I got tons of Docker running on my on my own PC here, and uh, and 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 it's, it's it's very flexible, at least for me. Um, so 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 this is the way I handle my builds. Uh, 
I want to hear from you. How are you handling bills? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I know that there's there's some cool apps out there to to do this. Uh, cool cool offerings. Uh, Baldos uh, Ale Ops uh, is one example. Um, it, but but let me know what 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 you're using uh am i totally insane of creating my own uh, i guess this started before anybody else did anything and and i had a need uh to get uh, apps consistent consistently on app source uh, uh and that's just f since the very first version of business central um but yeah. Anyway, this is this is how I do it. Let me know if uh, you think this is uh, interesting, and and I, I want to know how you're doing it. And um, until next time, I suggest you check out this video because that's filled with good stuff. See you there. Take care. Bye.